Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another spooktacular story time. So this week we are going to be talking about a creature that is often associated with Halloween. We see it in books and movies and in costumes and in decorations. Can you think of what it could be? You are right, we are going to talk about Bats. Now, bats are some really interesting creatures. They get a really bad rap sometimes. You know, maybe you learn about how, how they bite people and they get in your hair and get all tangled up and cause a lot of problems. But bats are really important creatures and they do a lot for our environment. And they're also, they're just fun. They're cool. So to start off with, we're going to talk about a few interesting facts about bats. First, Although they may look like birds and act like birds, they're actually mammals. They're covered in fur and they are warm-blooded. They give birth to live young and they feed their babies milk. Something else that's interesting about bats is that they are nocturnal. Now, if you don't know what the word nocturnal means, it means that they sleep during the day and they are awake at night. So our first story we're gonna read is about a group of bats who get to do something really cool at night when everyone else is sleeping. Bats at the Library by Brian Lees. Another inky evening's here. The air is cool and calm and clear. We feasted, fluttered, swooped, and soared, and yet we're still a little bored. All this sameness leaves us blue and makes us ache for something new. Then word spreads quickly from afar. A window has been left ajar. Can it be true? Oh, can it be? Yes! Bat night at the library! The sky is lively as we race together toward our favorite place. Eager wings beat autumn air. Look, that's it! We're almost there! Then squeeze together, wing to wing, we rocket through the opening. We've waited for this night all year, but this is it, at last. We're here. For, for most old bats, this isn't new. They've got lots of things to do. They'll flutter off and lose themselves among the books lined up on shelves. Other bats in munchy moods will study guides to fancy foods or hang out by a lamp instead to talk about the books they've read. But little bats will have to learn the reason that we must return. The ones who haven't come before have no idea what's in store. Some of them will drift away and figure out a game to play, like shaping shadows on the wall or wingtip tag around the hall. This big box is loads of fun, blasting brighter than the sun. Instead of copying books from shelves, we can duplicate ourselves. Look, this little bat here, he made a paper bat plane out of himself. How fun is that? Does it matter where you look? There's nothing like a pop-up book. The fountain water is nice and cool and makes a splendid swimming pool. Please keep it down, you must behave. This library is not your cave. It's hard to settle down and read when life flits by at dizzy speed. But story time is just the thing to rest a play exhausted wing. And if we listen, we will hear some distant voices drawing near. Louder, louder, louder still. They coax and pull us in until... Everyone, old, pat or pup, old bat or pup, has been completely swallowed up and lives inside a book instead of simply hearing something read. Now let's look at these. There are pictures from different storybooks and the bats are imagining themselves in them. For example, you have, what do we got here? Oh, Pippi Longstocking and Aladdin with a bat genie and a bat Aladdin. You got the Emerald City here from the Wizard of Oz. 
And here you have the blind man from um, a treasure island. So that's really cool. Oh, and here, Good Night Sun. Do you know a book, a children's book that's really similar to that? Maybe Good Night Moon? That's the bat version of Good Night Moon. Let's see, what else do we have here? The sword and the stone and Little Red Riding Hood. And Alice in Wonderland with a bat Cheshire cat. And Winnie the Pooh looking a whole lot like a bat. And Peter Rabbit and Mr. Toad from Wind in the Willows. Very exciting. Breathless, lost within the tale, no one sees the sky grow pale. Uh-oh. What is that light? A lamp? The moon? Our bookish feast can't end so soon. It feels as though we've just begun, but now we leave our books half done. Through the window, into the sky, it's much too late, we've got to fly. But maybe a librarian will give us bats this chance again and leave a window open wide to let us share the world inside. For now, we'll dream of things we've read, a universe inside each head. Every evening, one and all, will listen for that late night call. Can it be true? Oh, can it be? Yes! Bat Night at the Library. I love this book. I hope you enjoyed it too. So the bats in that story, when they left the library, it was light outside so they could see. But have you ever really wondered why bats can see in the dark when there's next to no light at all? Maybe light from the moon and the stars, but not much. Have you ever wondered how they could do that? They have a cool skill called echolocation meaning that they can see with their ears. And I don't mean they have eyeballs in their ears, but they have this cool skill where they let out shrieks, like really loud shrieks, the really loud sound, or loud sounds, very high pitched sound. Humans can't hear it and most animals can't hear it too. But those shrieks will bounce off of things in the bat's environment, whether it's a tree or a house or another bat or an insect, and the echo coming back to that bat will tell the bat information about what is in its, what is in its environment. Now, one of the things that bats are gonna be wanting to use their echolocation for is to find food, to hunt, like insects, for example. And did you know bats can eat up to 1,200 mosquitoes in one day? I don't know about you, but that's enough for me to absolutely love bats because I do not like mosquitoes at all. So our next book is a nonfiction book, meaning that it is full of facts about bats. So we're gonna learn more about what a bat does. So the book is called Big Brown Bat by Rick Krostowski. Shadows reach across fields one evening in June. As the warm glow of sunset fades, butterflies and songbirds settle into sleep. Now the sky belongs to the night creatures, like bats and fireflies, or lightning bugs, whatever you call them. Big brown bats wake up in their secret roost. They live up in the rafters of a farmhouse attic. The room is dark and quiet like a cave, but this cave is hot and dry the perfect place for a nursery. The bats rush off on their nightly hunt. They stretch their wings and drop into the air one by one. Flapping and circling around an air vent, the bats squeeze through the narrow slats to the outside world. One bat stays behind. She hooks her thumb claws into a rafter and hangs down. Soon she gives birth to a wrinkly pink bat pup. Isn't he cute? She cradles him in her tail apron and licks him clean. The pup can't see yet, but he can hold on. He snuggles under his mother's wing and drinks the warm milk she makes for him. A few nights later, the mother bat leaves her pup alone while she hunts. He clings to the rafter upside down and calls for her to return. His squeaking cries echo through the darkness. Finally, at dawn, she returns to feed him. The pup grabs onto her and purrs himself to sleep like a kitten. See, that's an interesting fact. I didn't know bats purred like kittens. That's pretty cool. Over the next week, the other bats have babies. 
While they hunt, their babies stay close together to keep warm. The oldest pup dangles from the rafter and pumps his wings for practice. He is almost strong enough to fly. When the, when the pup is three weeks old, he lets go of the rafter and plunges into darkness. Whoosh! His wings flash open and catch the air. The young bat flies with his hands. His long fingers and short arms are wrapped between two layers of rubbery skin. When he spreads his fingers, his wings open wide. He pumps the air to dash forward. Loop, swoop, spin. He flips in midair and tries to snag the rafter with his toe claws. After lots of fluttery stumbling, he finally grabs hold. One week later, the mother bat weans the pup off her milk. He is a young bat now and needs to hunt for supper. He follows his mother out of the air vent and gets his first look at the vast starry sky. Just then, his mother zips by, chasing a June bug. The bat leaps off the building and soars after her. He watches her swoop down on the beetle and scoop it up in her tail apron. Like his mother, the young bat uses his ears when hunting. As he flies, he opens his mouth and shrieks into the darkness. The pulses of sound spread like ripples on water. They bounce off objects and return to his ears as echoes. The bat gets clues from each echo. Together, they create a snapshot of the world around him, trees, houses, and other bats. An insect is flapping its wings up there in the treetop. It has skinny legs, long antennae. It's a moth. The bat pinpoints his prey. He shrieks faster. 30 pulses per second. 50, now 75. The echoes return at a furious pace. The moth has a secret weapon. She can hear the bat shrieks with a pair of ears on her back. She dodges left, whirls upward, then swerves right. But the bat flies straight and cuts her off. Just before the bat attacks, he shrieks 200 times per second. The echoes are so close together they return as a buzz of information. He rushes in for the kill. The moth has one last chance to escape. She folds, her, folds up her wings and dives from the sky like a fighter plane, just out of reach. The bat doesn't go hungry for long. He learns quickly that a June bug is easier to catch than an underwing moth. He bites through the beetle's armor and tastes his first insect meal. After a week, the bat is, hunt is a hunting machine, gobbling up one half of his own weight in insects each night. That's a lot of insects. In July, the bat eats cucumber beetles. In August, he eats leafhoppers. And in September, he hunts for green stink bugs. By fall, the bat is fully grown and padded up with extra weight. The stored fat will keep him alive through winter. Cold nights and hard freezes will tell the bat that it's time to leave the attic. The bat follows his mother across the farm fields and down a ravine where limestone cliffs hide secret caves. He, sk he skims one last drink from the river, then disappears into the hideaway. During the icy winter, the bat clings to the face of a stone wall. For six months, while he hibernates, Blood barely flows through his veins. Some days his body temperature falls below freezing. He's still alive, just waiting for spring. When the snow finally melts and insects buzz through the field, the bat and his family will wake up and own the night sky once again. The end. All right, now that we've learned some interesting facts about bats, I have a fun activity that we're gonna do. At least I hope you think it's fun. So. We're going to learn how to draw a bat. So if you already have paper and something to draw with, like a pencil or a pen or a marker, hang tight and we're going to be drawing soon. But if you don't have one yet, press pause on the video and go get a piece of paper and something to draw with and we'll be right back and we're going to start drawing. All right, are you all ready to draw a cute little bat? Great. So we're going to start with drawing the head. So. We're gonna make it a circle, not too big, not too small, like so. Then we need to draw the body. So we're gonna do an oval shape coming right off of the head. There we go, like that. 
And next, what does the bat need? The bat needs some wings so it can fly around. So we're going to start up and we're going to make kind of like a really wide V. So we're going to take right about where the shoulders would be, go up and out. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, up and out. All right, that's fairly even, I think. Now, the book that we just read mentioned that bats have fingers, and that's what helps them fly. So we need to add fingers to our bat. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them, start at the top of this peak, give them one finger, and give them another. So he has three fingers on this side. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Second finger and a third finger. Now we need to attach the bottom of the wings to the bat. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a hump connecting the first finger here to the body, like this. There. Now you're going to do the same action with each of the fingers. So second finger to the first finger, draw a hump, and third finger to the second finger, like that. So now you have one complete wing. Now let's do the same thing to the next side, the other side. Attach it to the body with a hump, and a hump between these fingers, and a hump between those fingers. Cool, so now we have the body of the bat. But what else is he missing? He's missing a few things. How about ears? Bats need ears, right? So we're going to give them, give this little guy some cute little ears. All right, next he needs eyes. So we can draw circles right here on his head, and if we want to make him look real cute, we do like little circles up here in the corners of his eyes. Now we're not going to color those in, but you can color in the rest. All right, now what else does the bat need? He needs a mouth to eat all those insects, right? But this is, this is a nice friendly bat, so we're going to give him a smile. And lastly, what else does he need? He needs fangs, right? Because bats have fangs. So we'll give him some cute little fangs. Ta-da! I hope you enjoy drawing this bat. I bet your bat looks better than mine because I'm not the best drawer. But now you know how to draw a bat and maybe impress your friends. So the next, the last story that we have for today is about a cute little bat. His name is Batty by, well, let's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's something really different about the name of the author. It's upside down. Sarah Dyer. Now, why would you think they would put that upside down? Do bats like stand on twigs like this or branches or do they hang upside down? They hang upside down, don't they? So I think that might give us a clue about what we might find in the book. So maybe some pictures, some of the illustrations, are going to be from the bat's point of view. So let's see what we can see inside the book and see if you see some pages that are from the bat's perspective. All right, Batty. Batty isn't the most popular animal at the zoo. All he can do is hang upside down. Hello? No one's paying attention to him, are they? They're more interested in the other animals. His efforts to impress the vis visitors are always unnoticed. He is determined to try to be popular like the other animals. Look at this page. The penguins are having fun in their pool. Batty wants to join them. He dives in. Ugh, sputters Batty. The water is freezing, and he realizes that bats don't like fish. Being a penguin isn't such fun after all. Next he comes to the gorillas. They look friendly. Humph, thinks Batty. Perhaps they are a bit too friendly, and he is sure he doesn't have fleas. Moving on, Batty arrives at the lion's den. This looks very relaxing. Phew, says Batty. It's, too, it's far too hot and bright in the sunshine for his tiny eyes. 
not giving up batty lands in the tropical aviary. All the birds look so beautiful. Eek! squeals Batty. Up close, it's far too noisy for his sensitive ears. Feeling sad and lonely, Batty flies back to his home. Oh, well look at this page. The words are upside down. I guess we need to fix that. When he gets there, all the animals he has met have come to visit him. Batty, Batty realizes that he is also good at making friends. The end. Now before our story time ends, I want to share with you the craft that we have prepared for this week. We have these cute little bat corner bookmarks. And what you do with them, how they work, is that you slip them over the corner of your favorite book and they hold your place. Isn't that neat? So the craft kits for these can be picked up at the Reader's Theater. They'll all be all ready for you. So come by, swing, one, swing by and pick one up. Um, but thank you so much for joining me this week and talking about bats. And I hope that you are going to be able to join next week as we talk about another Halloween theme. See you later.